Amen. We're going to be talking about, I'm going to start back up here, but we're going to be talking about putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. And there we go. Right up here, buddy. Amen. So, we've been doing a Truth About series, so let me just share this with you because I know we've talked to some people. If you're one of the kind of people that like to take notes, why don't you, why don't you request the notes? Instead of trying to take notes, why don't you request the notes? And you, those of you that are not in this state, we'll send them to you, you know? Email or mail. And the idea is so, when we take notes, sometimes we're concentrating, trying to turn to the scripture, and we're missing half of what's being said. So my sister over here heard from God two weeks ago, and God said this to her basically, if I get it all wrong, you'll, you'll straighten me out. And that is, if you'll take the word and just listen. You're not a scribe, so you can't take shorthands. Just listen intently. In fact, I wish you were all lining up the front pews. That's where your integrity should be, is your eagerness. But you got pretty close, <laughs> all right? Amen. And you see, you need to be in that position to just that, that, that eagerness to receive from the Word of God. Are you with me? All right. So in that alone, God will see to it that he'll reveal things from the Scripture that will specifically talk to you. And this is where people get into trouble. They'll hear the pastor, whoever he may be, speak the truth, and then something will go boom. And they'll go, did my mom tell somebody about me? Because it's so right on, you think, how does pastor know this? I don't know. It comes out of my mouth. So you need to understand that it's what comes out of me by the word not the personality. Okay? I'm sure the little donkey that Jesus sat on going into Jerusalem when everybody was going, Hosanna, Hosanna, he thought, man, I'm special. But he was just a delivery system. I'm just a delivery system. And I really want you to realize that I'm a nice guy, a really good guy, but I'm human. So don't put your eyes here. Listen to the words intently. So don't try to take notes unless you can, okay? Then I would recommend you listen to it a second time. I know, don't OD on Pastor Kerry. But when you listen to the second time, then get your notes out, and then you can stop it, and then write the notes down, you see. And then I would recommend, and I know I'm leaving one out, but I am recommend that then after you've taken notes, and everything. Pull your notes out and kick back and just listen to it one more time. You must think I have a whole lot of time to do that. Well, you must think that you're in control of your life. Duh. <laughs> come on. I've been doing this over 40 some odd years and I've seen people come ever just about every excuse in the world. And the third time, take your notes out Listen to it again, and God will give you more things that will be so specific for you. If you do it that way, you might, you, know, you won't miss something, okay? First time you hear it, you gain about 15 to 20%. Second time you hear it with your take notes, you get about 50 to 60%. The third time you hear it, you get close to 100% of understanding what's being taught. The trouble is, we're not disciplined like that anymore. School scared the snot out of us. You know, we're going to school. I want to learn. No, you don't. Especially those yahoos. They don't even know what they're talking about. They shouldn't ever took God out of the schools. All right, let's move on. Good morning, everybody. Putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. When we accept Jesus Christ into our heart, we become transformed from the inside out in our human spirit. It quickens. And as we walk with God, it quickens us and changes us from the inside out. And eventually, this old fleshly cocoon is going to break away. Now, the trouble with a lot of Christians is they only got enough to feed the, the little embryo inside the cocoon and to go to heaven but they haven't got enough faith, they haven't walked with Jesus long enough to bust out the old flesh 
and get really free with God. How would you like to be able to walk through the mall and have people healed? No words spoken, no nothing. Why? Because you're a living conduit. And when you learn to suck and, and draw into God and learn to project it properly, that's what we're getting to. This is our Christianity. It sounds like you're doing something really... No, I'm trying to tell you, this is what the disciples knew when they walked with Jesus. The trouble is they have a different wordage. I have more wordage that I can use to show you and, and, and illustration so that you can understand. So let's go on. All right, so it's like when God covered Adam and Eve. Remember we talked about that last week and week before about your covenant? It's like when God covered Adam and Eve with his covenant and with his skins, you and I are not only containers or vessels with God, but we are also covered with him. Aren't you glad? So the key is, how many have a cell phone? How many has ever had it out of juice? When you needed it the most? Well, maybe that was a long time ago because now you have a charger in your bedroom, next to your chair, one in the car. <laughs> because you need to use that thing, correct? And so on the positive, God needs to use you and he doesn't need a dead battery. And half the church of Jesus Christ has been dead looking for the next revival instead of starting one. Amen. So we'll teach you how to start one. It's starting already, have you noticed? It's starting already. And those that are sensitive to God can see God collecting people. And people are resisting it and everything like that. You just keep on going because God will start sucking them in. But you need to prepare and get ready because when all these people start coming in, Somebody's got to teach him and help. Hello. And the Bible says, look out among you and pick out seven well-trained men and women filled with wisdom that we could put over the tasks of the ministry so that the pastor continually seeks God, continually gets something fresh, and he does what he can do, but he's not doing everything. You don't want to kill your pastor, do you? So please... Learn to be responsible. This is not a babysitting party. It's the truth. Churches sometimes become a babysitting problem. We got grown up babies, but thank God you're not here. Say amen. All right, go with me to 2 Corinthians 5. Look at 17 and 18, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You and I are not only containers of God. We're clothed in God. So get a picture of that in your mind, if you can. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 through 18. Now read along with me. I'm reading from a New King James. I use a New King James as the basic text. I recommend like something like a Message Bible, Amplified Bible. You read with your major text. You understand books like Enoch, books like Jasher, books like uh, Jubilees. These are only supportive books. Never does a book be elevated to the level of the Bible. Do you understand? All your help books, all the books, all the other things that support the Bible are never to be elevated as the Bible. And the reason being because the Bible is Jesus and Jesus is the Bible and nothing can be elevated to that. So when you're studying the truth, you can use the book of Enoch. Sometime I will, I'll dazzle you with what's in there. But it will agree with the scripture and it will complement the word. Now, did you know that God said, I honor my word above my name? Say, I'm an individual. You know me, right? Don't say that. You know me, right? But when I speak my word, my word should be better than me. And that's what's wrong with society. Make sure your yay is yay and your nay is nay. Anything more than this comes from the evil one, it says. So make sure that your words are refined 
as you grow in the Lord. Because if you don't, you'll never get past a certain level in your growth. This is a big key. Say amen. How did you get saved? You believed in your heart and what? Confessed with your mouth and you were saved. When you sing songs, you believe and you sing, confess with your mouth, and you're being established. And so that's why the devil has you shutting up, not trying to repeat the words. This is all silly. Let's get to the word. You miss the whole thing, trying to reason everything. Let me do my job. You do yours. What is that? Learn. (laughs) I love you. You know I'm not mad at you, right? Okay. I'm just sometimes when I'm a matter of fact. The devil plays so many head games. Don't listen to him. All right, you ready? Therefore, therefore, if any man be in Christ. See the word in Christ? Everyone say in Christ. Say, if you're outside the building, where are you? I'm going to do this over and over until you really get it because people are religious about this. If you're in Christ, where are you? So therefore, you're silhouetted by Christ. And when you're in the spirit, Satan cannot see you. He sees Jesus. The new man. The problem is, we stick our head out so much with some stupid stuff we say and think. The devil goes, oh, that's not Jesus. That's Carrie. So try to get a hold of this. Can you say, come on, I'm ministering to you. Remember, God, you're his kid. Here is, here is his apple of his eye. And nothing more that God wants me to help you have a greater relationship with him. So old churches used to beat you on the head like a dentist office. Here I come, and we're going to numb you. <laughs> churches are never to drill truth into you. It's to reveal truth for you. A couple of big amens on that. All right. Don't forget that. I mean, I could drill, but that's not good. I don't need to tell you what's wrong with you. You already know. And then these prophets that run around. I got a word for you, brother. You be careful of that stuff. All right, so, therefore, if any man be in Christ, in Christ, he becomes a new creation. Outside of Christ, you're still your same old self. And if you liked yourself that much, why do you bathe? Why do you put makeup on? Why do you style with the tennis shoes? I, I, I can't really change a lot of tennis shoes. And I got paint on these, so I'm going to use a black marker and go make them all look new again. But you, you see what I'm saying? We try to polish the old man when God wants the inward man strong in the power of his might. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Everyone see Creation. That literally means that God and you become one. You're a God man, God woman. Look at your neighbor. And whatever they are, don't call them a woman if they're a man. You're a God. Go ahead, tell them. Tell them. Tell two or three people. You're a God woman. You're a God woman. You're a God woman. You're a God man. You're a God man. And I'm going to play, a, I'm going to play the the uh, socialistic excuse bar. Don't look at me. Look inside of me. Don't look here. Look inside. The real you is looking out through your peepers. The bad you is sitting there in the pew. So, we're going to have fun putting on Christ, taking off the old man. Can you say amen? So, you are a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. And this is what I had a problem with. What do you mean, Pastor Kerry, old things passed away? Well, inside your heart, all demonic, all satanic, all sinful nature has been removed. You're not a sinner anymore. You're a child of God. Now, you still make mistakes. You still, you want to call it that way, you still sin. Are you with me? But God has a new set of clothing for you. Can you say amen? Amen. I said, God has a new set of clothing for you. You don't have to wear hand-me-downs or hand-me-ups. We won't go there. We're going to move right on path. So you're a new creature. You're a God creature. We've got to get up in the morning, meet with God, and let him remind us of who we are. 
Don't let the day tell you who you are. Don't let your wife or husband tell you who you are. You get and meet with God first thing and let God build you up and tell you who you are so that when you leave, you leave confidently. You enter your job confidently. You drive down 410 Highway confidently. You with me? You're a new creation. So look at somebody say, I'm a new creation. So guess what? Moms, dads, sisters, brothers, you can't bring up the past of your brother and sister. We're a new creation. And if anybody brings up your past and all the past problems you have, they're doing the work of the devil. Don't dig up fluffy. All right, so you ready to get into this? I haven't even got into it yet. So put on new clothes, folks. So if you'll go with me to Galatians chapter 3, please, and look at verse 26 through 29. should be up on our board. Isn't that TV wonderful? Amen. Very clear. So you can take those notes. Now, this is where you perk up and listen. Therefore, it says, for you are all sons of God. Say amen. amen. Through faith, not through works, but through faith in Christ. For as many as you were baptized into Christ, remember we covered that, have put on Christ. Have put on what? Have what? You put on Christ. Now, folks, you don't put Christ on you. God the Father puts Christ on you. Hello. But if you go in and complain, complain, he's got to wait till you're done before he can put his, his Christ on you. Because he doesn't bless boo-boo. Hello? Honey boo-boo? Maybe you forgot about that. <laughs> you want to make quick money? Find something weird. Get the money and then get out of it real quick because honey boo-boo is going to grow up. <laughs> Thank God you and I, honey boo-boo, have died. All right, so look, listen. All right, you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 28 says, there is neither Jew, Greek, neither slave, nor free. The reason why that's in there is you're no longer, I'm no longer a Scottish man. I'm no longer just an American. I love being that. I'm a new creature. So if I was Jewish, I'm not that any way anymore. If I was white, I'm not that way anymore. If I was black, I'm not that way anymore. You see, that's what the devil wants to do. Remind you who you are and how different you are from everybody else. That's Satan's trick. God says we're all equal. He knows no color. So get that. Don't listen to what the world says, okay? They haven't got it right. When have they ever got it right? Only when they listen to God. We had a few presidents that listened to God, but the religious and the serpent people got rid of them. If you want to know who they are, meet with me after church and I'll tell you. I'll even show you where you can dig it up for yourself. You're interested in that stuff. Believe me, I live in a planet where everybody, except for God's people and sometimes them, lie. So I have to hear from God clearly, and so do you, so that you don't get caught up in the mess and play the game and lose. Satan's got the world system set up for you to gamble with your lives, and you will lose. The house is against you. But thank God you have Jesus. All right. So he says, there's neither Jew or anything. Okay, so a couple of points. Number one, get up in God. Is what the Bible says. We need to learn. Once we accepted Jesus Christ. We need to get up in God. And with God. Is that how you get up in the morning? First, first words out of your mouth is. Good morning God. Maybe not so loud. <laughs> My wife doesn't appreciate that. But I get up and I'll sit down. Of course I don't have a leg. So I'm sitting there. And I'm just greeting God. God I love you and I appreciate it while I'm waking up. Man, I want him to dress him before I hit really get going. I want him to know that he's the juice that makes my life rich and sweet. Are you with me? 
So I've talked, how many times have you heard me say, important to meet with God first thing? Important to meet with God first thing. Amen. So I'm going to do a little funny illustration as we get to the place where I need to go. So let's move on. Two, take off your flesh like a garment and lay it on the altar of God. Are you with me? And God will clean it. He will press it. He will disinfect it. He will remove the stains. And then you can put it back on. So if I could, you could catch me and I don't move off the camera here. This is me in the morning. I know it looks hot, doesn't it? Amen. I had my wife watch. This is my work jacket. It gets pretty crusty sometimes. But the whole purpose of it is to show you the old man. The old man was given to you. Your flesh was given to you so it might serve you. So when you think, gosh, I could use some water, your old man goes over there with you in it and gets the water. <laughs> I've tried to get you to laugh, George. All right. You see what I'm saying? So this is my old man. You notice that if I point, my old man's pointing. Huh? You notice that, you know, I can bundle up with my old man. You know, it's great. My old man has tape in it. You know, I'm really kind of scarred up. But when I say, Lord, I grab my coffee, grab my oatmeal in the morning because I, I have to get some food in here. Otherwise, my whole day will be shot. People that are dehydrated in the morning, just drink a little water, eat a little toast until you, all your hunger comes back. If you don't set yourself in the morning physically, you'll have a bad day through the rest. I'm talking to some people, okay? So when I come, I, I come loaded up, okay? Pay attention. Okay, I come loaded up. I'm coming to my prayer closet first thing in the morning. I said, Father, I want to tell you I love you. Your name is higher. You're the best father. And I just start loving on him. And then what happens is I take out my old man. So let's just put this here. Can you still see me in camera? Okay, thank the Lord. I take my old man, and this is the altar. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it says when you come to God, you have to, you lay your flesh on the altar. We'll, we'll read the scripture in a minute. So guess what this represents? Flesh. And on its own, it can't stand up. No matter how hard I try to live my life, it keeps falling. Oh, I could polish it up really good, Linda, but it keeps falling. So I come in, all oh, sleep and everything. I said, Father, I lay my life down, I lay my flesh down. What he does is he zaps it, he presses it, he zips it, he removes the sin nature for the day out of it so it doesn't fight you during the day. And he zaps it. Say amen. And you leave it there while you're talking with God. Because whether you know it or not, your flesh actually has a smell. That's why God covers you with blood. So the blood covers that. Okay? Now, once you lay down your flesh, God wants to clothe you with his son. So you don't put the clothing on, even though I'm putting it on. He drops it on you. You go into your prayer closet, and God drops. Now, you can see it's much bigger. I used to be huge. But anyway, the idea is it looks much different than my flesh, doesn't it? So, this the old man, this is the new man. Which one hides you? Listen, as much as I'd like to deny this, one time I went to a very, very influential church and all I had was a polyester suit. You should have heard all those ministers saying, is that Kerry Oliphant? What's he doing in a polyester suit? I always love to hear things like that because I always fix them afterwards and then I ask God to forgive me. But you see... The important thing is, you don't walk around with the stained coats in your flesh. Okay, you did all your prayer, you're clothed in Christ, 
Amen? Well, you have to pick your flesh up. I don't want to pick up my flesh up. Well, if you don't, you're going to be floating around. This is what is your vehicle that carries you. So you put the flesh on, it's been to the cleaners. It's been zapped by God. It's been pressed. Doesn't look like it though. Amen. And you can wear it through the day. But it doesn't look like this. It looks like Jesus. So then when trouble is trying to seek you out, Satan will say, oh, that's not Scott. That looks like Jesus. Leave him alone. I know Scott's in there somewhere. Are you hearing me? As long as you got this covered on you, Satan cannot see through God to get to you. You understand? Satan does not have your back door key. He has to have permission with your words. He has to have permission with you being in unforgiveness for a while to open the door and invite the devil to come in and harass you. Thank God you're not going to do that. Say amen. So let's go to the scripture that talks just about that pile of clothing right there. Would you go with me to Romans chapter 12? We're just going to bounce there for a minute. You go to Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to read two more scriptures to you, okay? Romans 12, just stay right there, because that's exactly what we're going to finish up with. Now, in Galatians, it tells us that we put on Christ. But in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man. God, I lay my old man on your altar. Okay, amen. How would you like it is when you came into church, all you saw was me and my old man. And I said, listen to me, I'm, I'm fooling with you. Everybody say, pastor's joking at this time. And I say to you, this is what an old man would sound like. <laughs> You're late. Hello. That's enough. I won't have to do anything more. <laughs> you see, so you can tell when you're in your old man and your old man's getting out of sorts. Because you're upset. You can't quite control yourself. Just pause and pray. And then God will come back out and you'll be able to do some of the things that while you were frustrating, you couldn't do. Say amen to somebody. Look at him and say, amen. All right, so a couple of points. To put off the old man means to take off the old man. You saw me do it here. And to put on the new man is to clothe yourself in Christ. And who does that for you? God. You say, Father, in Jesus' name, and God just clothes you. How many here's ever thought that when you pray in English... The devil might be listening in on your prayers. Raise your hands if you think you ever thought that. When you pray, Father, in Jesus' name, there's a complete code of silence went over you. Satan can't hear a word you're saying then. If you didn't know that, you, don't, you know it now. So if you're having a conversation that's kind of intense, but you don't want the devil getting in on it, you just say, Father, in Jesus' name, just cover me. That's it. Satan immediately, God sticks his fingers, an angel sticks his fingers in the, Satan's ears and he can't pick up what you're doing. That's what we do when we pray to God first thing. Is you're sealing that dude away from you. Scripture says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Hello? That's what you're doing when you're meeting with God. He's getting all that done. You went to the salon. You got your nails done. You got yourself a pedicure. I get a discount. Whenever I get a pedicure, I got a two-toed discount. That's all I have is two toes on my right foot. Hey, Amen. I look like a crab. But don't quote me on that. Anyway, I'm so glad to be alive. That's why I'm, I'm so glad to be alive. Don't you understand that? And I pray one day you're so glad to be alive. There's where the wisdom starts. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
after you fear God and respect him so, it's uphill from there with God. God start lifting you. But if you have no fear of God, then you're going to insult him. You're going to do your own thing. And you won't go anywhere with God. Although you might have all the Christianese down, you still smell like a fleshly old person. And I'm not talking about physically. All right, so let's move on. Third thing is, then our Father will clothe us with Jesus Christ and light. I like what Colossians 3 verse 10 says. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of God. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, if you want help, if your life is stressed, you're heavy burdened, you're heavy laden, what did he say? Come unto me. And I'll give you rest. Christians, if you are stressed, if you're all agitated all the time, let's get you to really deepen your relationship with God because there's where the solidity and the stability comes. It doesn't come by just studying the word. It has to come by meeting with God first. And he makes the word real. And by hearing his sayings and doing them, your feet are on a rock, right? And when the winds come and the seas blow and it beats upon the house, you're found on a rock. It cannot shake it. Now, what you don't know about that rock, and I've said it for two weeks, I'll do it again today, that rock is Jesus and he's up under your feet no matter where you go when you confess him and when you're not ashamed to lift him up high. He comes right up under your feet wherever you walk. Because you're a hearer and a doer. You're clothed in Christ. Amen. So come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Everyone say yoke. How many here have a seat in your car? And on that seat, it's a law now. You have to do what? You have to buckle up. Here's what Christians aren't doing. They're coming to Jesus, but they're not sitting down and buckling up. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Christians today are very much ignorant of what they need to know. You say, how dare you insult me? No, that's the whole purpose of religion. It's to make you feel you're all right but not give you anything you need. Hello, I'm talking to you. Satan's master at it. Why do you think the Jewish people who were really religious said crucify him? When Peter, who knew Jesus, when God manifested, Peter wants to be religious. Let's build three tabernacles. No, let's get people saved and get out of here. This world is going away, and we're going to get a new one. All right, are you with me? Romans chapter 12, please. And finishing. All right. You guys got it? I don't think it's in my notes, but it should be. Well, in Romans chapter 5, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your... The word be not conformed means like if you have a ring, or maybe you have a, a seal, and you press it into clay. When you press that seal into clay, it means conform or pressed into... Be not conformed to this world. Don't let your old man look like and smell like the world. Can you say amen? We have what we call, and this is my pet peeve, seeker churches. They look like the world. They smell like the world. Well, yes, pastor, but they're all designed to win people to the Lord. Yeah, but they have no programs to take them from there. That's where the little churches come in. Hello. And so I'm not against seeking churches. It's just after we found the Lord, what should we do? Walk with him. Amen. 
All right, so be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You present your body a living sacrifice. And that's what I did. Father, this morning, good morning, Lord. I'm going to do the first thing that I want to do. Thank you. Now let's fellowship. Our Father's the Spirit, right? He's not flesh. He's a spirit. So therefore, he wants to visit with our spirit. He doesn't want to look at our flesh all day. So lay it on the altar. Let God permeate it. Say amen. You lay your body. See, there's two of you. You and your body. Lay your body down. Okay, say I got it. Now, last scripture, Romans 13. Verses 11 through 14. This is where we're at. Everybody asks pastors, ministers, Lord, or pastor, where are we at? How soon do you think Jesus is going to come? Folks, you better be ready. Don't be thinking years now. I'm not thinking years. I'm thinking moments. Well, that scares me. Why are you scared? Don't you have Jesus in your heart? You're going then. What if I'm not perfect when he comes? You're going to leave that part here. You're leaving that here, and God's making it brand new. So what are you pampering your selfish flesh for? Let's take your spirit and go on a vacation. Amen. Are you still with me? How many here hate me by now? <laughs> okay, so listen to this. And do this. Everyone say, do this. Look at your neighbor and say, do this. All right, now let me speak from here, okay? And do this knowing the time. Do you know the time? That it's high time to wake out of sleep. Christians that are sleepy, you can't, can't even tell you how to lead somebody to the Lord. Sleepy. Sleepy. You're just Sleepy. Thank God I'm not talking about you. <laughs> People are so sometimes so self-conscious. I like to do that. They think the sermon's about them. You're so vain. Remember that? I bet you think the song is about... This one is a sermon. It is not. It's helping us. Can you say amen? All right. He says, for, the, for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Now it goes on and it says, the night is far spent. Look at, the, look at the country. The day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. <laughs> it says you got to cast it aside. You got to cast your, your flesh aside. Everyone say, I cast myself aside. Go ahead. I cast myself aside. You're not casting the real you. You're casting that old fleshly you. That's always got an excuse. I asked somebody, well, how come this again? You hear, excuse, excuse. How about I just blew it and forgot? That's good. All right, move on. Okay, I'm moving on. Now. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of what? Now, over in 1 John, it says, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So if he puts Christ on you, he's putting what? Light. What doesn't Satan like? What's the speed of light? It doesn't have a speed. It just sits on you until you flip up Jesus and then it runs at 186,000 miles per second away from you. I could put, just shut everything off where you couldn't see an ounce of light and I can flick a little bit or I could turn on a little flashlight and it will illuminate this whole place. Just a little teeny bit. And you're filled with God. So don't let the devil... Condemn you and say, see, if you were so holy, you would... And it says, my sheep 
will not listen to the voice of strangers. If you hear things in your mind that condemns you, you know it isn't you. And you know it isn't God. Even if you blow it so bad, God's not going to sit on you and say, you've done it now. Never. He says, let's help you get up because you, you truly are, need something. He does as a loving father. It's the only place in scripture that says the heavenly father runs to you. That's how much he loves us. He's called El Shaddai, the all-giving one. He's called the supplier of all our need. He's the Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. But we have to feel worthy to receive it. There's you got the lie. Nobody but Jesus healed in, in the testaments when he, they came to him. All of them were sinners. He healed them all. So if you think your sin is keeping you from healed, no, it's your thinking that's doing it. Because as a man thinks, so he is. If you think it can't happen, it won't happen. If you think it can happen, it will happen. If you give excuses of reason it can't happen, then you're going to sit in that mud womp until you figure out and go to God and he'll show you how it can happen. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're covered in the armor of light. You don't mind if I get excited about this stuff, do you? Well, all right, amen. I, I can't help it. So put on the armor of light. Then it says, who puts on the armor of light? God does. God puts it on you. you. You, it's a term, you put it on, but when you go in to meet with you, him, that's how you put it on. You go into the closet, God puts it on. But if you never go into the closet and talk to him, you won't have it on. You didn't put it on. Put on the Lord. Meet with him. That's all that means. Meet with him until you're saturated. You want to scare the iniquity out of the devil? Get saturated. Stand up. Start thanking the Lord. Man, you'll drive him completely nuts. I see pictures of some of you so fired up for God that you got him driven so far back that he's left your family. He's left your friends. And they all want to know why you're so on fire for God. See, the focus. Your focus is right. It isn't about you. So I can go out there and call you every name in the book and it's not going to offend you at all, right? Better not. Because I'm not cursing you. I won't even curse you. But I can comment on our flesh. But I won't do that either. Okay, so let's move on. Finishing. So let's put on the armor. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in rivalry, competition. Don't compete against one another. And drunkenness. Hey, that little beer at night's not going to hurt you, but I don't believe that you should drink. But we all know that sometimes we do. So instead of condemning yourself about that, ask God to help you. Okay? And get into God. You're going to sip a beer. And God, for, I'm not trying to say it's okay. But if you're going to do it anyway, sip it to Jesus. Hello? Why do I let the devil separate? You ever notice the devil separates if you make a mistake, he tries to separate you from God. Now you did it. You went out with some friends and you took a shot at tequila. Forgive me for even saying that because I don't believe you should. But you did. And the devil's right there jumping on you. Saying, you slime. Trying to divide you away from God. So the best thing is try to avoid those things. Can you say amen? You want to sip on a little beer? Make it root beer. <laughs> Make it amber beer, whatever it is. I don't know what they call it. There's root, there's root beer and there's uh, ginger beer and all that. Other. The idea is, socially, we've been programmed that we have to have a little buzz all the time. That is where God's supposed to be with you. You meet with God, let him give you a little buzz. Let him jolt you with some Holy Ghost, can you say amen? So you don't look for some kind of other thrill. So I'm not going to ever, you're not going to ever get me to, to preach against things that you do. That doesn't work. When's the last time you told your kid not to do something? What'd they do? That's what preachers do. They're pretty dumb. 
yelling at everybody and tell them what not to do, and the congregation just goes wild. <laughs> the law killeth, but the Spirit gives life. If I tell you you better straighten up, that's the law. But I tell you how you can by meeting with God, that's grace. And that's where revival comes from. I would say I'm pretty revived, wouldn't you? You go back a year and a half. I wasn't pretty revived. I was alive. And I was. It's things around me get to you. But God kept on saying in my spirit, I'm not even done with you yet. You think this is anything? And I'm looking at no leg and all that kind of stuff. You see how we focus on that? And I got, I got to the point, and I'm telling you, and we're finishing. I got to the point of feeling sorry for myself. I started well up with tears and think, huh. and then and, and God hit me. He says, what are you doing? I says, I guess I'm feeling sorry for myself. And, and then the people that don't know anybody will go, oh, give them, leave the man alone. You know, he needs his time. Shut up. I did not. I was being totally selfish. And I said to God, yeah, that's right. I, I'm feeling sorry for myself. And I died when I accepted Jesus. And as soon as I said that, bing, 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 it all changed. My outlook changed and everything. You be careful to pamper your flesh not. Don't you feed your flesh too much. Don't you pamper your flesh too much. Because you will look like a blob. Satan will see to it. Don't you think that you were born a certain way? If you were born a male, you are a male. Look down. It'll tell you. Don't wait for somebody else to tell you are. And if you think that you're gay and you were born that way, that is a lie from hell. Nobody's born that way. That's a spirit that came in and laminated on them. And it convinced them from their early childhood that that's who they are. Cast the devil out of them. Don't pamper them. Now, I'm telling you the truth. What would Jesus do? I understand you're now a pervert. Satan perverts true into a lie. Satan perverts right into a wrong. Satan perverts God's original creations into a perverted thing. Because he hates man. Did you know the devil went into, and he still has a make his own man program? <laughs> Can I, I got a little time yet. Did you know the devil has a make his own man program? Look at me. What do you think the crow magnet man was? And all of these old bones that they're digging up, these were his replacement for you. And they all fell. That's why we find their bones. He's still trying to hybrid a human. Well, that's pretty weird and far out there, Pastor. Why don't you read your Bible? It's not either. Religious people don't want to hear it. But Satan is collecting people all over the planet, trying to hybrid with them. However he's doing, these are demons. And sometime I'll show you a clip of Christians, before they became Christians, how they were abducted, how they were prodded, taken against their will. Nobody would believe them. They all want to give them tinfoil hats, and yet now they're born again, spirit-filled Christians. They live under the covenant of Jesus Christ and they got these testimonies and no place to share them. Well, I tell you, they can come here because we understand what the devil's doing. And we got them right here where we need them. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise. Slap them again. Praise the Lord. Praise. Amen. Doesn't that feel good? You got to realize he isn't that tough when you clothe with Jesus. We got these professional boxers, Eric, who are going to duke with the devil. Paul says, I don't fight the devil as one who beats the air. I don't fight the devil because I wrestle not. You see, all right, so, and finishing. 
So it says, as the day is approaching, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says a little clause because of the exchange. And make no provision for the flesh. In other words, when your flesh starts saying, hey, you know, do this, do that, you could say, no, you don't. You sit right back down. I didn't tell you you could get up from this table. You eat all your food. And you do, flesh, what I tell you to do. Do you talk to your body that way? <laughs> I have. My body wanted to stay in bed. I said, no, you're going to get up. But I don't feel good. I don't care. Let's get you in and pulverize you before God and you'll start feeling better. You see, you've got to start seeing things the way God has them and not what society has told us for so long. Question to you. Did you get anything out of this this morning? Will you be able to take it home, listen to it again? Not because I'm all that special. Because I want you to get this. It's so important that you have a new clothing. You are free from your sin. Even if you made a mistake this morning, you're free from your sin because I've spoken the word over you. The word is God, right? And if the word's over you and you're receiving the word, you're getting cleansed the whole time you're receiving the word. So let's bow our hearts, shall we?